It's been nine years since Dead Island 2 was announced. In that time period, we've had a whole new console generation. Standards in gaming have changed, as well as the world itself. Yet somehow, even after all this time and three different developers having a hand in this game, Dead Island 2 is actually really, really good. Say something. Uh, I'm not a zombie. Hi, I'm Mason, and today on Amateur Game Review, we're talking about Dead Island 2. To be completely honest with you, my expectations for Dead Island 2 were low. You might have heard the saying, a delayed game is eventually good, and a rushed game is bad. But look at Duke Nukem Forever. Hail to the king, baby. Or Cyberpunk, even though it technically did get better, so I guess both parts of that quote are true for that game. I truly thought Deep Silver was releasing Dead Island 2 just to be done with it once and for all. I thought they wanted to recoup some of the money they've spent on developing this game for nine years and just send it out to die. Fortunately, I was wrong. Dead Island 2 is actually really good, great even, and that's going to be a reoccurring theme in this video, how Dead Island 2 is full of surprises because this is the game that had every right to be bad. I spent my entire weekend playing the game, and even when I was at work on Saturday, all I could think about was jumping back into Dead Island. I did not expect to enjoy it as much as I did. So with that said, let's jump right into the game. Come on, can you please watch it with me? The first surprise about Dead Island 2 was how well the game runs, and just how polished it truly is. It's a shocker because you would think a game in development hell for 9 years, with 3 different developers cycled throughout, would make for a broken, buggy game. However, I'm happy to say those assumptions are wrong. I'm playing the game on my Series X, and so far, I haven't found any game-breaking bugs. And it's running at a stable 60 frames a second. Load times are quick, and there's a ton of options to fine-tune your controller to your liking. Which is refreshing to see, because I think a lot of developers skimp on these features when it comes to console gaming. It's safe to say Dead Island 2 is one of the most well-optimized games we've had this year. Surprisingly enough, but the game also looks great. It may not be a next-gen showcase, and it won't push your graphics cards to its limits, but the world of Dead Island 2 is stunning to look at. It's bright and colorful, not in a cartoonish way, but the sunny and vivid location of Los Angeles contrasts with the blood and guts of the zombie horde in a way that is just pleasant to look at, oddly enough. Stand the f back. It's hammer time. Dead Island 2 opens up with the selectable characters boarding a plane to leave Los Angeles as it's overrun by zombies. During the flight, a passenger is bit by another who hid their infection, which caused the plane to get shot down in order to contain the outbreak. It's after the crash when you can select your character to play as. Each character has different stats and different abilities, but to be honest, the differences aren't that huge. It's not like picking a class like this character is a tank or this one is support, since your playstyle mostly comes from what weapons you choose to use. I chose Jacob, mostly because he's on the cover art for the game, and thinking it wouldn't matter too much. I was wrong, however, and I mean that in a positive way. I thought the voice acting was great, and I enjoyed the quips and banter that Jacob makes whenever you do literally anything. I checked out some of the other characters online, and they all have this larger-than-life, over-the-top personality, so I recommend choosing whoever you think will make you laugh the most. Wait, wait too much. Oh, bandage and boots. <sighs> After the crash, you end up getting bit while trying to save another survivor, and you meet up with an actress named Emma Jean, who handcuffs you after seeing your bite. After convincing Emma and the other survivors you're immune from the virus, she allows you to go free. This is also when the Who Do You rapper Sam B from the first game makes his reappearance, and that made me way happier than it probably should have. <laughs> Your next mission is to contact the authorities in order to create a vaccine using your blood, despite being against Sam B's wishes. To be completely honest, the plot is predictable, and every trope and plot point you see, I can guarantee you've probably seen it a dozen times before in other zombie games or movies. I think Damn Busters knew this because the plot doesn't overstay its welcome when it does present itself. It's more on the back burner and rightfully doesn't take itself seriously at all. Which is good because I thought the first Dead Island and even Dying Light 2 made this mistake of taking themselves way too seriously. When the narrative elements in cutscenes do take place, what helps them are the zany playable characters and NPCs that are actually well written and thankfully not overbearing or cringy. So I never found myself bored, but strangely entertained with Dead Island 2. That one was 90% guff, Chutney. Oh, you all right? What I really didn't expect was how linear Dead Island ended up being. Instead of an open world, Dead Island divides Los Angeles into smaller hub areas. Now every hub is unique. Each one features a different section of Los Angeles like Bel Air, Beverly Hills, and of course the movie studios. 
Dambusters have done a great job of diversifying the hubs, so each one of them feels like a fresh experience every time you enter a new zone. The level design and world layout is very well crafted as well, and it made me want to explore all of the abandoned mansions in Beverly Hills or just slay zombies on the beach while the sun sets. Unfortunately, the downsides to these hub levels is that there's not much to do within them. Dead Island 2 only has about 35 side quests spread throughout the campaign, and the only other activities are to buy fuses to unlock the power doors or hunt down zombies with the key to a lockbox. Even then, these doors just contain loot and there's only so many of them. It's disappointing because I want to explore every nook and cranny and this just seems like a waste of good level design. I genuinely do enjoy the world, yet each hub has so much space just to offer nothing. My only hope is that any upcoming DLC will flesh out the world, but as of right now, the base game can be beat within 15 hours. However, I'm sort of thankful for Dead Island being on the shorter side because it's coming out during the same time period as the new Legend of Zelda, Redfall, and Star Wars Jedi Survivor. So for me anyway, it's a great game to play between these releases. Oh, yeah, sorry, it's a mass maid's day off. I could tell. <laughs> nice, cool. Let's talk about gameplay. Dead Island 2's main focus is on its first-person melee combat, just like its predecessor and its relative Dying Light. While Dying Light went on to add in parkour which sped up the gameplay loop, Dead Island 2 keeps it at a slower pace, allowing you to focus on a couple of zombies at a time, and it works out. The controls are responsive and smooth, and all around feel amazing, but the animations and hitboxes are outstanding. The zombies respond to which direction your weapons hit, and will react to where you hit them. If you hit a zombie in the arm with a sword, it'll chop it off, or if you hit a weaker, stumbling zombie with a big hammer, they'll ragdoll away in the direction of your swing, or get their head crushed if it's a downward attack, and it's just so satisfying. It's an insane amount of detail, and so much thought was put into this game, which brings me to one of my favorite aspects of Dead Island 2, the flesh system. This game is filled to the brim with gore, and it is bloody beautiful. To really see how in-depth the flesh system is, find a zombie dead on the ground, and keep hitting it until you see its internal organs, and then beat it some more until it's nothing but a skeleton. Such a cool feature, and I think this is why the slower pace of Dead Island 2 works, because you get to see this system work during combat. But it doesn't just apply to melee attacks. The environment also plays into effect. If you see a downed active power line, you can herd the zombies into the electricity to zap them. Or if you stumble upon a pool of toxic chemicals, kick the zombies in and watch them dissolve. The environment can act as an obstacle for you as well. If you're blocked by a wall of flames, but find a container of water, you can pour the water and watch the flames burn out. You can even clean up any blood after a skirmish. There's also different zombie types that are immune to the various environmental hazards. Zombies in firefighting gear are immune to fire, and hazmat wearing zombies are immune to chemicals. I never felt like I was fighting the same zombie because of this variety and what the zombies wear. If you're on the beach, you'll see zombies in swimsuits or shorts. Or if you're at the movie studios, zombies will have film equipment or like boom mics on them. It's just an insane amount of detail that I never would have expected going into Dead Island 2. Overall, the combat is great, and probably some of the most fun I've had while playing games over the weekend, but there are some downsides with the gameplay loop that pertains to the variety of weapons and modding them. Dead Island throws new weapons at you every second, but they're all just different types of the same weapon. Once you've seen one bladed weapon, you've seen them all. It doesn't make much sense to switch out your weapons unless you just like the appearance of a certain weapon better, because they all roughly do the same amount of damage, and you can upgrade your current loadout to match your current level at a workbench. Which brings me to the weapon modding. You can add the various environmental damage effects as well as increase the damages and durability. You can eventually add in zombie modifications that give the weapons neat properties such as exploding on impact. Even then, you have to grind zombie parts to make these mods, and by the time you unlock the ability to add zombie mods, it's during the second half and you're probably already set with the weapons you want for the end game. I wish you could find these zombie mods a lot sooner. There's also the ability cards. Each card gives you a different ability, but to be honest, I stuck with mostly the same ones during the game. Whenever I did change them out, I never felt like they changed the gameplay loop in a meaningful way, or they simply weren't fun. Such as the dodge card. I could never get the dodge timed right because the window is so small, so I went back to the default dash card because I knew it would at least get me out of a sticky situation. The last issue I have is the shooting. It's leagues above the first Dead Island, don't get me wrong. However, I think we're at a point where shooting mechanics have a standard. And it's weird that this is something Dan Buster screwed up. The guns just aren't that fun to use, especially with how great the melee combat feels. I recommend just sticking with that. 
Overall, Dead Island is a good game. Great even. But the problem with the game is, it's a short game priced at $70. It's released too close to other big releases. It's hard to recommend it at a full price for most people, unless you have the spare income or just not interested in those other releases. However, if you wait for a sale or clear your backlog, I can safely say you won't be disappointed with Dead Island 2. She always likes surprises. Thank you so much for watching. This review was sort of last minute because I didn't plan to review Dead Island 2, but I enjoyed the game so much I wanted to talk about it. If you enjoyed the video or Dead Island 2, give this video a like. If you want to see more videos, subscribe. We're three friends who started this channel to share our love for games, and every subscriber helps the small channel grow. We're also on Twitter and Instagram if you're interested in following us there as well. Thanks again everyone, I'll see you in the next video.